Jerry of the circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Who's there? <laughs> Who's there, I say? It's me, Jerry. I, I was looking for you, Charlie. Oh, there you are, Jerry. It's so dark, I couldn't see. Wasn't sure who it was. Uh, I've been following you. That's funny. Rags and I have been prowling all over to get you. Well, well what are you doing back here so soon? I, I thought you went to eat. I'll tell you later. Huh? But we just saw something go into Clara's tent. How long ago? Oh, just a little while. We only just come back on a lot. It was so far away, I, I couldn't see very well. Come on, we'll go on over and see. Got a flashlight? Sure. Hey, say, why didn't you flash it on us instead of following us? Well, I wanted to be sure who you were. If you'd had a gun and I turned the light on you, you'd known where I was. Gee whiz, I, I never thought of that. <laughs> Shh. You'd better keep quiet now that we're so close. <sighs> Look. Where? Right back of the wardrobe top. Did you see that? Looked like it got away. Gee, it went fast. L like a big shadow. You've got better eyes than I have, kid. I... I didn't see it. Come on, let's look inside. I'll take it easy, Jerry. Someone may still be here. Oh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll flash my light around to be sure. Not a soul. Well. We got here just too late. Oh, gee. Someone's sure been here, though. Look how those things are all over the floor. Hey, don't go inside. Yes, why not? Uh, did you see something? No, but, but we had Clara sweep the sawdust off the ground so we could see if there were any footprints. Say, put the light down there, will you? Yeah. I don't see any footprints. That's funny. Golly, I, I know someone's been here. Look at the mess and... Oh, it's gone. What? Patsy's dress. It, it was right here on the table. I, I put it there myself. You mean the white one she wears in the act? Yeah, with all the rhinestones. Oh, Gee, that's terrible. What'll she do tomorrow? Oh, this is getting serious. Here, give me that flashlight. Yeah. Let me just look on the ground once more. Say, golly, that's funny. You can see our footsteps plain enough. Say, look here. Uh, what is it? What did you find? Say, see these prints? That's not a shoe. It's a foot. It's an animal. A big animal. Golly, kid, I believe you're right. Let's see. Why, it looks like a chimpanzee. Of course. It's Agar the chimp. Come on, let's get down to those monkey cages quick. You bet. Come on, Rags. <coughs> Why on earth didn't I think of a monkey before? Uh, this way, Jerry. The cages okay. are in this wagon back here. Oh. That's right. I, I was getting mixed up. I, uh, I haven't gotten much acquainted with the monkeys yet. Well, don't you like them? Oh, sure. I've I just been busy, I guess. Monkeys are awful smart, aren't they? They're a little too smart for my comfort. You try to teach a monkey a trick, and before you know it, he's got it perfectly. But he'll tease you by pretending he's not interested or don't understand. I like that little monkey that, <laughs> that works with Beppo, the, the little Italian clown. <laughs> Rags, come back here, Rags. Oh, let him go. What's he after? Rags, him? come here. Whatever he saw must have been right there by that chimp's cage. Here, let me take a look around. Rags, aren't you ashamed of yourself running ahead like that? See anything? Nope, not a thing. Funny, here's the chimp all safe and sound. Yeah, and her cage is bolted on the outside. Gee, that's funny. Hmm. Hey, have they got another chimpanzee as big as this one? No, but no. Well, it, it's a cinch. It's not Agnes' footprints down there in Claire's tent. You think somebody could be going around barefoot? Well, I don't know. My golly, it's a mystery to me. If Ag had been there, she, she'd have some of the stuff she stole in her cage, wouldn't she? Seems like she would. It beats me what that dog was barking at. Looky. Say, flash that light down here by my feet. 
Well, I'll be. Well, what do you know about that? A banana skin. Well, someone's been feeding these monkeys all right. Gee, I, I sure wish we didn't move tomorrow night. Well, why? One more night, and I think we could clear up this mystery. Yes, how? Oh, I don't know. I, I'd have to figure it out. Say, do we stay in the next town overnight? Well, let's see. Uh, yes, come to think of it, I guess we do. Good. By that time, Rags and me will get an idea. <laughs> Well, to take us down to the hospital this morning. Well, seeing it's the last day in town, I guess I'd kind of like to see your Uncle Dan, too. Uh, I hate to leave him behind. Rags, come here. That pup sure likes to sniff around all these concession stands. Yeah, well, uh, he's got to get acquainted with this circus. After all, he's got to keep a nose out for what's going on. He doesn't miss much. <laughs> uh, Jerry, don't you worry about leaving your uncle behind. It'll take him a while to get good and strong. And when he does, then you two can decide what's best for the both of you. Hi, Bumps. Uh, going to town? Oh, hello there, Jake. Yep, yeah, just for a little while, though. Gee, it'll seem funny having an honest-to-goodness family again. What's that? Do something wrong? Oh, I don't know. Seems to come from those dressing tents. Yeah, the tent used by the sideshow folks. I'm going to have it, I tell you. Oh, well, get out of my dressing room. Goodness, what's going on? Oh, it sounds like Major Might and the bearded lady are at it again. Do they often fight like that? Yeah, they've been going at it for about five years now. No. What's wrong? <laughs> well, we all think the bearded lady is really mighty fond of the little major, but everyone has kidded him so about her, it's like waving a red flag in his face to even mention her name. He, he's kind of excitable, isn't he? He's downright temperamental. See, that little fella has a disposition like a powder magazine, but with a heart of gold underneath if he happens to take a liking to you. I suppose he's just sensitive about being little. <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head, Jerry. <laughs> Get away, dog. Beat it. Get out. Get out, little dog. Go on. Leave a major alone. Rags. Rags, come here this minute. You see you see how the bearded lady is trying to protect the major? Rags, what's gotten into you lately? Oh, what a that dog in a cage with the rest of the animals. Well, good morning there, major. You having some trouble? Oh, good morning, Bumps. I certainly am. I always liked you, Bumps, but I can't say as much for that dog you work with. I'm sorry, major. I, I don't know what's gotten into him. He, he's usually good. Oh, it's a fine how-do-you-do when dogs start picking on you, too. You come right back here, Major. Don't think you can get away as easy as that, going out to talk to some friends. Oh, it's you, Bumps. Now, what do you think? You leave Bumps out of this. We're friends, and I don't want him annoyed with any of your... Well, I guess he's my friend, too. I won't have it, I tell you. I just won't have it. What do you think, Bum? Well, I'm sure I don't know I though. happen to go into the Major's tent for something. That's just it. What business have you in my tent? I'd like to know. That's beside the point. It is not. It's just exactly the point. And what do you suppose I found tucked in the wastebasket? Well, I'm sure I don't know. It's it... a trick. Somebody's trying to get me in trouble. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you did it yourself. Me? It's an insult. Why should I steal Patsy's dress and then put it in your dressing room? Why should I? Tell me that. Patsy's dress? The white one with rhinestones? Exactly. Why should he have anything belonging to her in his room? It's a joke. Somebody's trying to get me in trouble. I never knew it was there, and oh, I have no... Of course, of course now, Major. Oh. I shouldn't worry about it so much. Just see that it gets back to its owner. That's all that's necessary. Yeah, she was worried about not having it for her act this afternoon. Well, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Major, but we're late. We're going into town. Uh, there's a streetcar. we got to make on. it back in time for the show. Goodbye, so come goodbye. along. Hurry, goodbye. Jerry. Goodbye. Yeah, bye. And I'll see the Patsy gets her dress. We'll have to run to make it. Think we can? <laughs> Why, sure thing. You don't think I'm too old to run after a trolley car, do you? Of course not. <laughs> I must say, I'm glad it had to stop, though, for some other passengers. <laughs> well... We made it. Hey, Bump, let's sit way up in front. Oh, sure. Sure, if you want to. I'll lead the way. Here we are. You want to sit by the window? Oh, no, no. You climb in first. <laughs> Windows always belong to boys. Thanks. Say, Bump. Yes, Jerry? Don't you think it's kind of funny? The bearded lady finding Patsy's dress in the Major's wagon. Well, it's certainly not usual. Still, it isn't usual for her dress to disappear, either. Yeah, that's true, too. But don't you think that... What, Jerry? Oh, nothing. I I was just thinking. Just wondering about the Major. Uncle 
Uncle Dan. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Hello, son. And Bumps. Nice of you two to bother to come and see an old sick man. You're not old. And, and look, you can't be so sick. You're sitting out. Doesn't he look swell, Bob? Oh, he certainly does. Say, you'll soon be back in those jungles, bagging wild animals again, Dan. I'm afraid it'll be quite a while before I do anything as strenuous as that. However, for the condition I'm in, I feel like a million dollars. I'd rather have you than the million dollars any day. Well, if you don't think I'd have gone through this whole experience just for the sake of finding you again, you're very much mistaken, Jerry. It was worth it. Gee, you're the only family I got, aren't you, Uncle Dan? Yes, I am. And a happy family, now that Mr. Randall has told me all about everything. Pretty lucky finding Lorenz. I'll say so. I'd have been in a fine spot. Of course, the doctor could tell them that I'd lost my memory, but they might have believed I was really Decker and that I only thought I was Danny Dugan. Golly, that'd have been terrible. Hello there. Got visited? Oh, come in, doctor. This is my nephew, Jerry. Oh, we've met before. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to break up this liver party. Oh, no, not yet. We, we just got here, and, and it's my last visit. I'm sorry, son, but I've got a specialist here from out of town who wants to look over your uncle. And it's his only chance to do it. I guess if it'll help your uncle, you'd rather go, wouldn't you? Oh, gee, sure, but... Oh, golly, I, I hate to say goodbye. Don't, then. We'll just say, be seeing you soon. Sure, you bet. Be seeing you soon, and, and be seeing you well. That's the ticket, son. Bye, Bumps. Take care of that boy for me. Well, I certainly will. Oh, and Randall's promised to look after you until you can pay him back. I know. I tell you, Doc, circus people are the grandest people in the world. They sure know how to help when it's needed. Bye. Gee. Say, uh, Jerry, <clears throat> what about Clara? How are you coming on with your detective work? Oh, not so good. We got to think of something for tomorrow night. Some way of catching sight of that thief. Well, it's pretty hard at night when it's dark. Bumps, I, I got it. What? Gee, why didn't I think of it before? He can set up a camera with a flash bulb attached. Then if someone comes in and touches a wire or something, the light will go off and take a picture of the thief. 